Hello, my name is Dr. Asley. I'm a board-certified fellowship-trained spine surgeon, and I'm a medical director here in the Spine Treatment Center. In this segment, I'm going to be talking to you about a condition called scoliosis. What scoliosis is, is an abnormal curvature of the spine. As you can see right here, this is the spine. You have curvature of the spine to stand and balance your trunk and make uh, humans actually walk upright. You have lumbar lordosis, thoracic kyphosis, and cervical lordosis. However, sometimes there's an imbalance. Uh, now, there are two types of scoliosis. One is adolescent scoliosis that we see in adolescent population, and the other scoliosis is adult onset scoliosis, which are two separate diseases. Uh, Adult scoliosis is onset in the later in age, and adolescent scoliosis onsets around puberty when there is a high um, spike in growth. The incidence of scoliosis between men and women is pretty much equal, but the problem is that it's not very progressive in men, but it could be very progressive in women. Therefore, it's the female adolescent that end up requiring the most number of surgeries, and we don't know why. Now, scoliosis is not just a curvature of the spine to right or left, but it actually is a three-dimensional twisting of the spine. Um, first, when it happens, we can notice it in adolescents by bending forward and they can have a little hump. What we do for treatment, actually, if the curve is small, we can brace them, or if the curve is progressive, at certain angles, we have thresholds for that, then we have to have to do surgery. And that surgery is to have a long rods to correct the curvature and actually fuse the spine in that level. Now, that's adolescent scoliosis. Overall, scoliosis in this population is not considered a painful condition. And if the patient approaches uh, completion of growth, um, then the progression of the curve slows down. Therefore, we're not worried about the curvature getting worse. Therefore, a patient doesn't need surgery. Now, when it comes to adult scoliosis, pretty much world of spine surgery just jumble them up in one uh, category, adult scoliosis. I like to classify it into two groups. One, people who had scoliosis but was minor in their adolescent. Now, because of the curvature that they have, they have imbalance and it has caused the discs to wear out unevenly. Now they have pain. The other subgroup is that people that they didn't have scoliosis and they developed scoliosis because of unevenness, uneven wear of their spine or of their discs, and they end up with a curvature and a little bit of uh, pain because of the unevenness in their discs. It's a two separate concepts because the treatments are different. If you do have adolescent scoliosis that was asymptomatic and now became symptomatic as an adult, then the treatment is very similar to what you had as an adolescent scoliosis with, with, with the long rods fusing from thoracic to lumbar spine. However, the adult onset, the true adult onset scoliosis is mostly in the lumbar spine because the thoracic spine is protected because of the rib cage, happens in the lumbar spine. And their treatments is simpler and you still need a long fusion, but not into the thoracic spine, mostly in the lumbar spine. And uh, what is a complex surgery? You need a long fusions, you can have complications with not healing and all that stuff. And I tell my patient, the most important thing that I tell my patients is that they have to have a ex realistic expectation of surgery because sometimes surgery is not to fix them to get a brand new back and their pain goes completely away. But actually, the goal of surgery is to stabilize their back so they don't get worse. That's why the patients need to have an expectation, realistic expectation of surgery. And that is the subclassification that I have for scoliosis. And I hope that you understood a little bit of this very complex condition. Thank you very much.